Let's give the Lord a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come. Let's magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all. Oh, come. Oh, come. Oh, come. Let's magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, come. Oh, come. Let's magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, come. Yeah. Oh, come. Let's magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Santa. Oh, Santa. Let's it be the rock. There it is. Let's it be the rock of my soul.
have the victory, y'all. We have the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a song that's been on my spirit this week, and um, it's called Flow to You. I don't know if all of you know that song, Flow to You. Let the rivers of my worship flow to you.
Come on, anybody got the highest praise for me? Hallelujah. From the bottom of my heart, I say, Hallelujah. Come on, anybody. Come on, give the highest praise. Hallelujah. Last time. 
give them a praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, give them a praise Hallelujah. right there. Thank you, Lord God. God, you've been to us. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to us. Hallelujah. We can't praise you enough. We thank you for this worship, this time of worship. This time that we can recognize on one accord how good you have been to us. God, we thank you for your traveling mercies today. God, we thank you, oh God, for everybody that's standing in the building. For everyone who is joining us online by social media, God. Father, we thank you, oh God, that they did not find it robbery to come into your presence one more time. Wanting to recognize you in all of their ways so that we could get direction father we need direction today enemy is trying to spin us around trying to turn us around trying to make us leave our first love god we come to proclaim our love for you today and not only proclaim our love for you but we come to stand in the love that you have shown us and even when we're acting like a mess, even when we find ourselves out of the will of God, you still love us. And we thank you for your consistency today. We thank you for your consistency towards us. Hallelujah. Because we know we don't deserve it. That's why we thank you for favor. We thank you for grace. And we thank you for mercy. We thank him for your loving kindness, God, towards us today. Father, we ask you right now, oh God, to anoint this service like never before. Change minds throughout the world. Change hearts throughout the world. In the name of Jesus, open up the blinded eyes today, oh God. I'm talking spiritual blindness. God, open up the blinded eyes today. God, we ask you right now, God, to speak to our minds and to our hearts so that we can receive what you have for us. We thank you for the mind of Christ because, God, we know what it is not to have the mind of Christ. <laughs> oh, we know what it is not to have the mind of Christ. The enemy infiltrates our thoughts constantly, telling us that we're not going to make it. He's a liar, and the truth is not in him. Come on, somebody shout, I got the victory. I got the victory. Come on, in Jesus' name. That's why I can worship him, and I can praise him in spirit and in truth. Somebody say amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise right now. Hallelujah. Amen. This song has just been in my heart this morning. It says, the presence of the Lord is here and it's here in this place. Can't you feel the anointing and his power? Oh, come in his presence with sin. is here in this place come on sing it with me oh the presence of the lord is here and it's here in this place can you feel the anointing
do me a favor, put your hands together. Come on. The presence. Come on. Of the Lord is here. say in this place. place. Come on, do you feel it? Yes. Come on, in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, I love my neighbor. I love the one standing next to me. But I need God for myself. Yes. I need him to speak to my heart. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. Come on, I need him to relieve me of what the enemy has been trying to put on me. Come on, that spirit of depression, we bind it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. 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 God, we need spiritual sight today. Yes, Lord. We need to see the move of God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every yoke be destroyed. Yes. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Yes, Lord. Break every chain. Yes. Break every chain. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. I refuse to be bound, y'all. I refuse. Yes. Come on, are you ready to fight today? Yes. Lord. Come on, I feel like fighting today. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I feel like there's a fight going on. Yes. Come on, there's a fight going on right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, the enemy is trying to infiltrate you. Yes. Trying to get in your house. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm talking about this address. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But we buy sickness and disease today. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I've been getting phone calls this week about different sicknesses in the body of Christ. Amen. But we buy those things right now. Yes. How many know we have the authority? Yes. Hallelujah. To tell the devil to flee. Yes. And he has to move. Yes, he does. In Jesus' name. Yes. You said, I said he has to move. He has to move. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. You got to be aware of the weapons that you have. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to be aware. Are you aware of the weapons that you have? Amen. I, I think about how, amen, how, you know, if someone was to come in my house, I'm talking about my address, my, my where I live. Amen. If they came up in my house looking to do some damage, amen, we have weapons to protect ourselves. Amen. It will cause them to think twice. As a matter of fact, it would pretty much cause them to run. Amen. How many know we have spiritual weapons when the enemy tries to come into your house? I'm talking about sickness, disease, depression. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about lack of finances. I'm talking about the things that the enemy tries. Come on, y'all. Tries to bring us down. Do you have anything in you that will cause the devil to think twice? <laughs> I said, do you have anything in you? Do you have a word in you that will cause the devil to turn around and run? Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold the Bible talks about that strong man hallelujah strongholds they got to come down when you have the word residing on the inside of your mouth when you have hidden the word of God in your heart hallelujah you will find that you have fire in your mouth anybody got fire in their mouth hallelujah as i said last week amen it's hard to punch a devil in the face with your natural fists amen but we got some weapons y'all we got some things that we have on the inside of us that can be used to fight the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so many ways and so many attacks. Amen. He's not always coming in your front. Amen. Life battles. Oh, man, they're, they're tough. Amen. I was talking to my brother again. As you always know, we have our conversations talking to my brother and he was talking about how you know many times we will minister and many times we will give the word and you know so many people will say oh that was a wonderful inspiring word but it didn't change their mind it didn't change their life you know it's good to you know I mean I don't even know if it's good but many people will come and the word of God and the song service and things like that will tickle our ear amen but it stops at the ear tell somebody let it in let it in let that let that word in your ears so that it can penetrate your mind amen I was telling him I said I said will do you understand how difficult it is amen to receive the word of God and not have the mind of Christ think about it because it's going to make you grateful about what you have and we all can identify what I'm talking about right now because we all have been there we have all come and sat under the word of God amen and it did not change us at the time and I was telling my brother I said you know Will I've come to the realization that it is not my job to convince 
anybody. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Spirit, he said, you cannot come to the Father unless you be drawn. Amen. So it's so wonderful to stand and have the mind of Christ that we could receive all that he has for us. Because to the, to the people who don't have the mind of Christ and that the Holy Ghost is not in it, it just sounds like gibberish. It just sounds like anything else. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I can say that because I sat in that position at one time or another, more than once. Come on, y'all, let's be truthful about it. Amen. I let the word in and let it go out the other side, huh? So don't just let it go in. Keep, tell somebody, keep it there. Let it go down in your heart where it will cause change. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you realize, amen, that God has had mercy on you, it'll give you a praise on the inside. Don't act like you've always been where you are. Come on, somebody. Don't act like you've always been saved, always been sanctified. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. It ain't been that long. Hallelujah. It ain't been that long. Some of us still ain't got there yet. But thank God that you have the mind to come and God is showing his grace and mercy towards you that you're sitting in the house of God. Tell somebody I'm in the right place. Come on, at the right time for God to move in my life. Come on now. I don't care what your hangups are. I don't care about what I, I, you know, I have sympathy for what you're going through. But the reason why I don't care is because I know that God can change it. There is no limits to what God can do. And there is no secret to what God can do. You got to understand y'all these ministries that we have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Are being shaped daily. They're being shaped daily. Now, a lot of y'all just said, I heard you in the spirit. I ain't got no ministry. I know you did. I know you did. But I want to let you know we all have a ministry. Hallelujah. And maybe your ministry right now is being uh, uh, buckled up in you because you still need to work on you before God can release you to the masses. Come on, y'all. But we're still being shaped every day by our testimonies. Our ministries are being shaped every day. Every test, every trial, we go through every test, every trial that we overcome in our lives. It's shaping us. Somebody say, I'm being shaped in Jesus' name. Amen. And what that does is that you got to understand that when you're being shaped, amen, after a while, in that position, it's going to be perfected after a while. So joy, when they talk about joy coming, it's going to come after a while. I know many times, amen, we struggle and say, Lord, when is this thing going in? Amen. But if you just chalk it up and see what it is and see what it's for, hallelujah, get some spiritual sight. Amen. And I'm not saying that you're going to understand everything because life is hard. Life is challenging. But what I'm telling you is that no matter what you go through, I believe God enough that he will show us his hand somewhere and he will give us peace in the time of storm. Going over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Lord, we ask you right now to open up this word to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at the first verse. Have your way today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. 
going to stop right there. I need you to understand here. This is Paul speaking, saying that seeing, not, not, not just believing, but this is something that he sees. Somebody say, I can see. Seeing that we have this ministry, seeing that we have this testimony, seeing that we have this work, seeing that we have this life that God has put on us, as we have received mercy, somebody say the mercy of God. Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, without the mercies of God, you will not succeed. So Paul was saying, yeah, I understand I have a ministry. I understand God has given me this testimony, but I want you to understand something that it's because I receive his mercy, I faint not. I don't have to faint. Hallelujah. I'm not knocked out. Hallelujah. It says here, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. This is what it will cause you to do. When you have the mercies of God, you ain't got to cheat nobody. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't have to be dishonest. It says not walking in craftiness or handling, not trying to manipulate people. The word of God deceitfully. I don't have to twist it. I don't have to twist the word of God to make it to line up with my life. Come on, that's the problem that we have today is that everybody wants to take the word of God to fit the way they live instead of fitting the way they live to the word of God. Do you understand that today? Amen. So we can't come and just try to color in the word of God. Say it for what it is. It says, but by manifestation, by seeing of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. This word is going to be manifested, y'all. It says, but if our gospel be hid, talking about the mind of Christ here, it is hid to them that are lost. Hello, somebody those that have not yet received the grace to receive the mind of Christ. I want you to understand something. I want you to understand the position that you are in today. You need to thank God that you have the mind of Christ, that you can receive the word of God for the word of God. This word is hid to those who are lost. It makes us, it's, 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 it is a, it's a sad situation to realize there are people out there that are lost. And we come in contact with them every day. It says, in whom the God of this world, listen y'all, the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Who's the God of this world? Satan. Look at what's going on. Look at what's happening. Can't you see his hand everywhere? The Bible calls him the prince of the air. Now listen, he, he, he has some charge down here, but that don't mean that God is not in control. Hello, somebody? And God takes care of his own. So I'm not subject, come on, to the devil's mess because my God supersedes. He's not the God of the world. He's the God of the universe. He's the creator of all that exists. But it says here that the devil has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Understand that. Hallelujah. Because listen, y'all, if we think back not too long ago, that scripture right there pertained to us. Hello, somebody. When we talk about God opening up the blinded eyes, it's not always physical sight. 
Hallelujah. You need your spiritual sight opened up. Somebody say, open up my eyes, Lord. Come on, open up my eyes, Lord. Hallelujah. That I'm not blinded to the enemy's mess. It says that their minds were blinded. But it says here, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not of ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Let's stop right there and realize the significance of that. He didn't say shine in the darkness. He says shine out of the darkness. That means that Jesus came and got into your mess. Got into, he came into your dark place and shined the light out of you so that you could now see. See, what I understand is that when somebody shines a light on you, it causes nothing but blindness. Am I right? Come on, if it's a big bright light, Vicky, right? It'll, it'll blind you. God is not looking to blind you already blind. But he said he came down into your mess and shine the light out. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he causes that light to shine out of you, that's why the Bible says, let my light so shine before men that they might see my good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. It says here to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ but we have this treasure in earthen vessels y'all these bodies right here realize what we're in we're still earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us in other words we're still gonna have some things that we have to go through because we ain't there yet as I told you many times, God will never, ever put you in a position to where you don't need him anymore. So everything in this life, come on y'all, ain't going to be all roses. There's some things that we must go through. The Bible tells we're going to have to bear our cross. Amen. So I'm not trying to give you some fairy tale. Amen. Even though I believe it's true to the people of God that, amen, they all live happily ever after. I believe that for the people of God. But while we're here, remember saying after, after this. But that does not mean that we should not enjoy life right now. Amen. That does not mean that we're not supposed to have the fullness of life right now. Hallelujah, but we have to understand that we are still earthen vessels with the treasure on the inside. And it's for the excellency of the power of God that is given to us. It says here, this is Paul talking. Amen, it says we are troubled. He's telling the truth now. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Hallelujah. This is mercy. So when we read this, amen, you can you can kind of fill in the blanks here. When he gives you, amen, the, 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 the disparaging uh, 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 phrase uh, uh, of, of we are troubled, which you can follow us up with, but the mercy of God. But the mercies of God. That's why we're not distressed. Because up at the top he said, if it were not for the mercy that we receive, right? In verse 1. If it wasn't for the mercy of God that we receive, we would be troubled on every side and distressed. When you're distressed, amen, you, you, you don't know where to go or how to get there. You're just stressed out and you're open for anything. You're open for anybody to lead you to another place. 
And a lot of times that other place is not necessarily a safe place. Because when you're distressed, you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking calmly. When trouble comes. Trouble on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Hallelujah. When you're persecuted, people coming at you. Amen. Feels like nobody wants to come to your rescue. You better believe, amen, and know, amen, that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even though you're persecuted, even though people are talking about you, even though people are judging you, God is still right there. Bible says you can even come to the point of being cast down. I mean, throw you down. People will throw you down. Am I right? Discard you like nothing. Cast down but not destroyed. I refuse to be destroyed. Life will sometimes cast you down. Situation will sometimes seem like they're getting the best of you. Hallelujah. But God is saying, I will not forsake you. I will not allow you to be distressed when you keep your mind stayed on me. I'll keep you in perfect peace. Hallelujah. What I like about this is that Paul started off by saying that we see these things. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, y'all know the scripture. Amen. Starting at verse 7 it says, we walk by faith and not by sight. But that doesn't mean that the gospel will not be manifested. Come on, right in front of your face. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. It says in Psalms 27 and 13. Well, hold on. Let's start at verse 11. Amen. Because this is what we need. The Bible says, teach me. Oh, this is where Sister Sheila came from today, isn't it? For the opening scripture this morning, isn't it? Teach me thy way, O Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, this way you just don't come by natural. You got to be taught. Says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Because of my enemies. Because of life circumstances, y'all. We got to be taught how to navigate life. Otherwise, we will find ourselves in those predicaments. It says, deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. This world is cruel, y'all. Things are cruel. People are cruel. But again, David speaking this time, he said, I had fainted. <laughs> Here we go, y'all. I had fainted unless I had believed to see, somebody says, see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Listen, y'all, we cannot faint. We cannot faint. The Bible ends it this way, and I'm almost done. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's a song we used to sing. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up as wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Then it says, teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, because we are impatient people. Come on, when we're going through, we want deliverance now. And I don't blame you. Amen. Don't, don't, I'm not telling you to change. Don't, don't change that mentality. Nobody wants to suffer. No, no, listen. I know it says that we have to, but that don't mean that we want to. Hello, somebody. We understand that we have to go through something, but I don't want to go through those things. 
But I got to know, amen, that as I go through, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that I will see, I will see the goodness of the Lord right now. Somebody say right now. How many know you can see the goodness of God as you go through? Hello, somebody? I mean, if you, if you are measuring God's goodness at the end of your test, you're missing the point. Come on, if you're, if you're, if you're judging a man God by the end result, you're missing the point. God is trying to teach you something as you go through. His mercy, his loving kindness. Come on. As we go through our emotional roller coasters, y'all. Come on. Because you know we're emotional people. And I believe that God is an emotional God. Because what did he say? How did he make us? Just like him. In his image. He's emotional. That's why he can... That's why he's the son of man. Jesus is the son of man. That's why he came down to this earth to die for us. The Bible says, amen, that he can identify with everything that we will ever go through because he experienced it all. He experienced being forsaken. Come on, y'all. But he felt he was forsaken by the father. We have never got to that point. Because God said his eyes on a sparrow, so I know he watches me. He's watching me even in my mess, he's watching me. But the Bible says that the father had to turn his back on his son because of all of our sin. Not what he did, but the sin that he took from us and put on himself. You talking about feeling abandoned, y'all? Hallelujah. That goes to show you, amen, that no matter what, you are able to make it. Somebody say, I'm able to go through. Come on, whatever I have to go through, God has made preparation for me, amen. And I know some people ain't going to understand. They're going to look at me and wonder how and wonder why. But all I got to do when they come and say how, all I got to do is say Jesus. Come on, I don't know. I don't have no explanations. I mean, I've been through some things. Amen. I didn't even know why I had peace. Hello, somebody? Anybody been there? I didn't even know why I got up out the bed the next day. Hallelujah. Within myself, I wanted to lay there. Because y'all know we get a pig's mentality when we're going through. We find that mud and we want to lay there. Woo, this feels kind of cool. Come on, y'all. It feels good to stay in the bed under the covers and not want to face the world. But that ain't reality. Hallelujah. That is not the call of God. That is not the mercies of God that will cause you to stay there and wallow in your mess. God will cause you to stand up and be counted and tell somebody, my grace is sufficient for you. Regardless of what you're going through, somebody, my grace, my mercy, the love that I have for you. Come on, somebody. The love that I have for you will outweigh any man leaving you. Or any woman leaving you. Come on, somebody. God's love is greater. Anybody abandoning you. God's love is greater than that. Hallelujah. There are human emotions and human things that we will go through, y'all. But we got to know that God has made perfect preparation for us. Do you believe it today? Come on, give God a praise on this afternoon. Hallelujah. 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 God, we need your strength today. We need your help today. I know that there are heavy hearts. I know there are heavy minds. Not only in here, but all over the land. 
things are happening that we don't have an explanation for. Some things are just unexplainable. But God, who is rich in mercy, hallelujah, who is rich in mercy, will help me to make it, will help me to take it, will help me to go through. I need the Lord, yes, I need thee, yeah. I need thee, I need you to bless. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to to Thee. I need the Lord. Somebody lift your hands where you are and tell them, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you. Every, through every situation, every trial, every test, I need you. I need you to heal me. I need you to bless me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to save me. I need you to lift me up. I need you to turn me around. I need you to establish me. Yes, I need you. Oh, yes, I need you. I need you to bless. I need you to bless me. I need you to bless me. I need you to bless me. Bless me now. Somebody say right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. My Savior. Somebody say it's me, oh Lord. I need you. It's me, oh Lord. I need you. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to to Thee. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. I need you to know there's only one name. There's only one God that you can go to and his name is Jesus Christ. That's another song that we sung as children. But I feel like it's appropriate right now just to get it in your minds and in your ears. And the song simply says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Beside him there is no other. Jesus is the way. Said Jesus. 
Jesus is the answer for the world's day. Above it there is no other. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the answer and it's for the world today above him there is no other Jesus is the way he's the truth and the life he is the answer for the world today and above him there is no other Jesus is the way come on if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins come on you're looking for a better way I'm not saying that everything is terrible in your life but what I'm telling you today amen that because he's the answer those things that are upside down, come on, he'll turn your crooked road straight. And even the things that you think are good, he'll make them better. And I'm not trying to give you a fairy tale, but I'm here to give you the truth. I'm here to give you the truth. I understand, amen, that when Jesus comes into our lives, we're able to enjoy what we enjoy even more hallelujah and that we can do it amen with the conscience that we know amen that God is pleased with us that he's pleased with our walk he's pleased with our talk I'm not saying that sometimes we won't drop the ball but his mercy endureth forever and we don't use his mercy as an excuse to continue in sin because I believe amen because sin stinks to him it'll start to stink to you hello somebody I said when you get Jesus on the inside he'll take away the very desire amen of the things that so easily beset you because you'll find grace and you'll find favor and you'll find rest for your soul in Bible study, we've been talking about the favor of God so much. And I want you to know that God wants you to experience that favor. But the favor that will trans transcend this life even into the next. Because there's another life. There's another realm. There's another dimension. This. And you got to be ready when he calls your name. So if there's someone here who does not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, I just want you to repeat this prayer with me. Dedicate your life to God. Let him change your mind. Let him show you a more excellent way. Just pray this prayer and say, Lord God, I come to you today just as I am. It's me, Lord, coming to you, asking you to forgive me of all of my sins and all of my shortcomings I declare that today that I am saved that I am sanctified and I am free from the bounds of sin and from the bounds of, sh of shame in Jesus name I accept your forgiveness and your grace in my life in Jesus name amen come on give him a praise right there <laughs> hallelujah you know a lot of times when we say this prayer amen I think about when I came to the Lord amen it seems like I can hear the Lord speaking back to me and saying it's about time hello somebody because he knows, amen, how far I push the limits. Anybody else push the limit? Come on, we all kind of push the limit, right? Amen. We were out there doing things that we knew were not of God. Amen. He said, boy, it's about time. 
I'm telling you today, somebody that accepted the Lord today, I'm going to tell you, it's about time. It's a good place. It's a good time. Hallelujah. It's about time. Amen. That we give our lives to Christ. Amen. And I want you to use your testimony. Don't be ashamed of where you come from. Don't be ashamed of the things that you used to do. You know, when you're not ashamed, you're not ashamed when you don't do them anymore. Hello, somebody. All right. That's your testimony. Amen. Ministry is beginning today. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise. Amen. We thank God for the word. We thank God for all the songs and, the, and everything that has been shared on today. Amen. I want to thank God. Amen. First of all, I want to recognize all of our first time guests in the house. Come on. If you're a first time guest or visitor, just lift your hand. Come on. Come on. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. If you are a first time guest, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give my hand clap. Amen. We thank God for these two sisters that have come. Amen. That are part of our sister Victoria's family. Amen. They were here, amen, under some uh, sad situations the last time, but I'm here to see them here in the house of God today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. My brother, my brother right here, he kind of spoke you up today. He did. He did. Because he came to me this morning. He said, you know, Wade, he said, our church was full a couple of weeks ago. He said, is anybody, any of them coming back? And I said, I don't know. I said, that's up to the Lord. And here you are today. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for you because you did say you were coming back. You said you were coming back. So we thank God for you being women of your word. God bless you. But I really believe it was the Lord that brought you here today. Come on, give me a hand clap, y'all. Amen. We got some special, we got some special, special guests in the house, y'all, today. Amen. We got the Johnsons back in the house. My God, all grown and big, and my goodness. Come on, y'all. Just stand up, stand. Let me see how tall you got. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Amen. We thank God for my family, my brother and sister. Amen. My nephews and niece over there. Thank God for you. All right. Y'all can sit down. I'm going to get you after church. Amen. Uncle Wade got plans for you. Amen. I'm glad to see the Boswell family in the house too. I know mommy went downstairs with the baby. Amen. But I thank God for all of y'all. Let me see. Wave your hand, Boswells. All y'all Boswells over there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Some of them went downstairs. That's all right. Amen. Thank God for my sister who just came in the door. God bless you in the back. God bless you. We're glad to have you. Amen. We praise God for you. Amen. And for everybody that is in the house on today, we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God that you have, you know what it shows me that God is working on you. Amen. When we come to the house of God, he's been speaking to you. It ain't just because you want, nobody just want to come to church. Hello, somebody. Nobody just want to do that. No, that's got to be the beckoning of the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about when you're outside the will of God. Hello, somebody. Uh, do I got to clean it up for y'all? Jesus, do I have to be that specific? I'll make it plain. I'll make it plain. Amen. See, but the thing is, is that when you really have the mind of Christ, that thing turns around. You understand that this is the goody goodies. Come on, y'all. Amen. Sunday morning. Can't wait. Can't wait another. No, that's a song. Can't wait. Can't wait another minute. Huh? We gonna we gonna adopt that today, just for the day, for a minute. All right, <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for everybody. Listen, y'all, we're about to uh, collect the offering, Amen. So we have our envelopes, we have our tithing envelope, we have our building fund envelope, Amen, and a love offering envelope, Amen. Feel free if you need an envelope, just lift your hands. The ushers will assist you. We gonna do communion. We're going to do communion. 
Amen. But we're going to get this out the way. Amen. Uh, uh, so we want to prepare for our giving. Amen. So we ask you to get uh, some, some uh, finances in your hand to be able to support the ministry and support the house of God. Amen. PSENG still comes, y'all. Amen. I know they know about we a church and Jesus is here, but they still send the bill. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to have the finances to keep, amen, this heat on. Amen. But we can turn it off right now because I'm hot, y'all. Turn the heat off. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. But we do thank God for all. Amen. Because, you know, when we're obedient and we give, amen, to the house of God, he in turn gives back to us. Amen. We know the Bible tells us to give 10%, amen, as a tithing offering. Amen. And he will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Amen. And also he has commanded us to give offerings. So whatever, amen, the Lord puts on your heart to give, amen, give it, amen, with a smile on your face. Amen. All right. So right now, Brother Brian, come on up. Y'all, we're going to start exercising again. I know we've been having these ushers come and pass buckets, but y'all going to get up today. Amen. We're going to walk around and we're going to give our gifts in, amen, the offering bucket on today. All right? So everybody stand to your feet. Amen. And then after you go back to your seats, we're going to immediately go into communion. All right? Amen. So we're going to get a gift in our hand, everybody. Amen. And we're going to lift these gifts up to the Lord on today. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for these gifts that you have blessed us with, oh God. And we're taking just a portion, oh God, of what you have given us and we're giving it back to you. So we ask you right now, oh God, that you bless it, that you increase it. Bring us increase as we increase the house of God without in the name of Jesus. And whatever way you choose to bless us, we will be satisfied. We give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you're going to start from the back, come down the side aisle, around, and back up the middle to your seats. All right? So the ushers are in charge. Amen. Yeah. 